Hi, and welcome to today's Milani Minute. Today we're going to continue our uh, series on the attributes of God, and we're going to talk about the truthfulness of God. Now you may be asking yourself, John, why are we talking about the truthfulness of God? Isn't it obvious? Well, in a way it is, but we need to understand the depth of the truthfulness of God and what that means in our lives and how that applies to our lives today. As we deal with this, there are some very important questions that we will have to answer as we go through. But first, I want to read a passage that will lay down the, the, the foundation of understanding that everything that God tells us is true. Psalms 119 verse 160 says, The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Everything that God says, everything that God inspires is truth. Of course, a very easy way uh, that we have been instructed in the scripture to test prophets is by testing the truthfulness of their prophecy. If they come true, then it was true. If they don't, don't believe not just the prophecy, but don't believe any of their teaching because they're not speaking the truth. The way teachers weigh their teaching against the Bible, against the Word of God, because if it matches the truth in the Scripture, we can assume that their teaching is true. But if it violates the truth of the Scripture, it must be thrown out. But as we evaluate this, it brings us to the point where we have to wrestle with the same question that Pilate wrestled with when he was interviewing Jesus. What is truth? Pilate understood the concept of true and false, so he's not looking for fact or fiction when he asks that. No, instead he's, he's asking because he's trying to figure out how you weigh the truth when it is not clearly observable. What is the truth? Of course, the answer to that question is, the truth is God. God is truth. He is the source of all truth. This is the reason he cannot tell a lie, is because it is, violates his essence. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, uh, says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is saying, I, God the Son, am truth. Of course, if we recognize that, we understand that he is the source of moral truth and that nothing he says to us will be untrue that can really affect our lives if we let that sink in you see we may sit there and say it's such it's such a, an odd question to ask what is truth but a few years ago when I was living in California there was a debate about gender and are people really born with a gender are there more than one or two genders? You know, can somebody have more than one gender? These different questions. And if we step back and we look at it, we can say, this is ridiculous. If a person is born a male, they are a male. If a person is born a female, they are a female. But because the people who were raising the questions had rejected God, they had rejected the source of truth, they found themselves questioning truth that is observable. This questioning of the truth comes because of the rejection of God as truth. If you look at Romans chapter 1, and I'm not going to turn there right now, but if you go look at Romans chapter 1, it talks about when they rejected God's truth, when they rejected God, he gave them over to this, and then they rejected his word, and he gave them over, and he gave them over. And there's a list of sins that he's given them over to, sinful lifestyles that he's given them over to because they have rejected him, because they have rejected the truth, which is God. 
We as believers, though, we have the opportunity to have the opposite. In John 16, verse 12, Jesus is saying, he says, I still have many things to say to you, but cannot, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. The spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. When we put our faith in Christ, we are given the Holy Spirit. And just as the apostles after Pentecost had the Holy Spirit that helped them to divide truth, to understand truth, just as he revealed himself to them and inspired their writings, the Holy Spirit will reveal truth to us. He will make it where we can use our Bible and measure what we hear and what we see against the truth. And the Holy Spirit will guide us because he is the spirit of truth. And then, as we walk in the spirit, we can truly understand what is truth. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for giving us truth. We thank you for being truth. Lord, we thank you for uh, sending your spirit to empower us to understand truth. We pray that you would uh, be with us, help us to recognize truth, and help us to uh, recognize and proclaim the truth of you, that you are. We pray these things in Christ's name, amen. Thank you.